is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with mouth, tongue, throat, and voice ailments that start with the letter B and C. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different subtopics, that I decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system, then I'll address issues with the skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, ailments of the heart, blood circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, bladder, then ailments specific to women and specific to men, then issues of the hormones and metabolism, and after that I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations, and the immune system, then issues surrounding fertility and pregnancy and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems, then homeopathic remedies that address special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mirror people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings, and an account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this videos and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So, let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with mouth, tongue, throat, and voice ailments. Today, we will continue with mouth, tongue, throat, and voice ailments that begin with the letters B and C. Digestion begins in the mouth. Saliva lubricates food and adds starch, digesting enzymes to it. The teeth crush and chew it, and the tongue pushes it around the mouth, then rolls it into a ball for swallowing. As the tongue pushes the food past the soft palate, the ep epiglottis shuts like a lid over the entrance to the windpipe, and the food slides into the esophagus. Saliva is 99.5% water is, and is continuously produced to clean the mouth. Saliva contains digestive enzymes and other enzymes that destroy bacteria. Food entering the mouth stimulates the taste buds on the tongue, and the brain receives their messages and instructs the salivary glands to go into top gear. 
Saliva is copiously produced in response to acids, such as vinegar, lemon, things of this nature. Nausea also produces reflex salivation. Some of the sensations we call tastes are in fact smells. As we chew, the volatile constituents in our food are wafted up into the nasal cavity where they are sampled by the sm smell receptors. Although the tongue has about 2,000 taste receptors or taste buds on its side in upper surface, these detect four basic tastes, salt, sweet, sour, and bitter. All taste sensations, whether we interpret them as cheese, chocolate, tea, or apple pie, are blends of these primary tastes. Although any one taste bud is capable of responding to a number of stimuli, the tip of the tongue is most sensitive to sweet and salty tastes, the side to sour tastes, and the back to bitter tastes. There are also a few taste buds on the soft palate and in the throat. The vocal cord lies in the larynx, or voice box. When we decide to talk, muscles contract pulling the vocal cords, which are tiny elastic ligaments taut that out outrush of air, speeded up because the passage is narrowed, causes the cords to vibrate. The more forcefully air rushes past the cords, the louder the noise we make. The greater the tension in the cords, the higher our voice sounds. Intense emotions, infections, dry air, and irritants, such as cigarette smoke, can all prevent the vocal cords from vibrating freely. Bad breath, halitosis. Bad breath or halitosis is usually smelled by others. To test your breath, breathe into the cupped palm of your hand and inhale. Various mouth and upper digestive tract conditions can cause bad breath. For example, caries, gingivitis, inflamed gums, ulcers in the mouth or on the tongue, salivation disorders and indigestion, and gases from the stomach. Bad breath can also accompany infections such as colds, sinusitis, sore throat, tonsillitis, and laryngitis. Metabolic disor disorders such as diabetes and smoking, drugs and fasting can also cause the breath to smell in such circumstances, toothpaste and mouthwashes are of little help. Specific remedies to be taken three times daily for up to seven days. For breath that smells sour, especially after a stomach upset, after meals, or after drinking alcohol with slight nausea and is worse in the morning, use NUX 6C. For breath and sweat that smells offensive, where the whole room smells of bad breath with copious saliva and dental decay, with a tongue that is yellow and furry, use Mercurius 6C. Af for after eating fatty food and the person is not at all thirsty and the mouth is dry, use Pulsatilla 6C. For breath that smells putrid or bitter, especially in young people going through puberty, Use Arum 6C. For putrid smelling breath with the gums healthy but the teeth are loose with mouth ulcers, use nitric acid 6C. For breath that smells of onions, use Petrocellinum, Petrocellinum 6C. For breath that smells of feces, use Quercus 6C. That's Q U E R C U S. For bad breath due to blood in the mouth, especially after an inner injury, use Arnica 6C. The obvious course to help yourself is to avoid foods and other substances that leave a strong odor behind or cause indigestion, such as garlic, onions, fats, alcohol, and nicotine. Pay regular visits to the dentist and practice good dental hygiene and stop smoking. Burning Mouth Syndrome Burning mouth syndrome is a great soreness and smarting of the mouth lasting for months or years that is most common in women after menopause. Its cause may be decreased hormone production, nerve damage, stress, or food allergy. In isolated cases, a deficiency of B12 or folate has been identified. In addition to soreness and smarting, the mouth may feel dry and the tongue may stick to the palate. Some sufferers also experience headaches or unjustifiable fear 
that condition is due to cancer. Symptoms tend to worsen as the day goes on, but the mouth and tongue may look perfectly normal. It is sometimes helped by sore throat lozenges, ice cubes, or cold drinks, but it is usually made worse by spicy or acidic foods, alcohol, nic nicotine, influenza, and talking. Anesthetic and antifungal preparation mouthwashes and artificial saliva have no effect. Constitutional homeopathic treatment is recommended, although the remedies that follow should be tried first. Specific remedies to be taken four times daily for up to 14 days. For a, for a sudden onset with the mouth numb, dry and red inside and the tongue whitish and furred up, use aconite 6C. For a mouth that is dry, red and burning, use belladonna 6C. For symptoms made worse by cold drinks and soothed by warm ones, use arsenicum 6C. For the person that drinks lots of cold water and the burning sensation extends down the throat, use phosphorus 6C. For mouth sores with lips dry and a bitter taste in the mouth and the center of the tongue is whitish, but the margins and tips are red, use sulfur 6C. Self-help. Suck ice cubes if the pain is severe. If the condition seems to be aggravated by stress, try to learn some form of relaxation or meditation. Extra vitamin C, B6, B12, folate, and zinc, and evening primrose oil may be beneficial. Cold sores. Cold sores are caused by the extremely infectious herpes simplex virus which can also cause corneal ulcers and genital herpes. So do not touch the eyes or genitals after touching cold sores. In the first stages of the infection, blisters and then ulcers from inside the mouth or on the face accompanied by red swollen gums, a furry tongue, mild fever, and a feeling of generally being under par. Though these symptoms clear up within a few days, the virus may not be destroyed. So wherever your immunity is at a low ebb, the infection will tend to reappear around the mouth and lips, causing blisters that weep and then become encrusted. These usually clear up within five to seven days. Though antiviral ointments are often effective, it is best to avoid all external applications of anything while undergoing, undergoing homeopathic treatment, if possible. Outbreaks can be treated using the following remedies, but constitutional treatment is the proper solution to this situation. Specific remedies to be given four times daily for up to five days. If there are many ulcers inside the mouth and the gums bleed easily and the whole mouth is very sore and it is worse at night, use Semper Vivum, Semper Vivum 6C. If there is a deep crack in the middle of the lower lip and the mouth is very dry with sore, puffy and burning and pear-like blisters on the lips, use Natrum Mure 6C. If the mouth and chin are infected with ulcers at the corners of the mouth, use Rust Tox 6C. If there are cracks at the corners of the mouth with lips pale and red itchy rash on the chin, with burning blisters on the tongue and the breath smells nasty, use capsicum 6C. Self-help, take extra lysine, which is an amino acid, and vitamin C, zinc, and bioflavanols, and avoid foods containing arginine, which is another amino acid found in peanuts, chocolate, seeds, and cereals. I have a great many videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care!